Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. says the Lord God, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out. As shepherds seek out their flocks when they are among their scattered sheep, so I will seek out my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places to which they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries and will bring them into their own land and I will feed them on the mountains of Israel, by the watercourses, and in all the inhabited parts of the land. 
I will feed them with good pasture, and the mountain heights of Israel shall be their pasture. There they shall lie down in good grazing land, and they shall feed on rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I will make them lie down, says the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed, and I will bring up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak. But the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them with justice. Therefore, thus says the Lord God to them, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep. Because you pushed with flank and shoulder and butted at all the weak animals with your horns until you scattered them far and wide, I will save my flock, and they shall no longer be ravaged, and I will judge between sheep and sheep. I will set up over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them. He shall feed them and be their shepherd, and I the Lord will be their God, and my servant David shall be a prince among them. I the Lord have spoken. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's church. A reading from Matthew. Jesus said, when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at his left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or imprisoned and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly, I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, You that are cursed, depart from me into eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me, naked, and you did not give me clothing, sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty or, or, or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, he did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Namaste. Namaste is a Sanskrit word that means literally, I bow to you. I bow to you. It is a common greeting in the East, in the Eastern world, yet so much more than a how do you do. 
colored by Hindu spirituality, the greeting is a reverent acknowledgement of one's own and another's sacred wholeness. It is an acknowledgement of one's own and one's other sacred wholeness. Sometimes it is translated as the divine in me sees the divine in you. Namaste. Reciprocated. Two people acknowledge a unitive consciousness, a unitive consciousness, a deep and profound abiding sense at the center of one's being that we are one, that we are one and one in all that is. In this week's uh, daily readings, I'm not sure if you get them, but in this week's daily readings from uh, Richard Rohr's uh, Center for Cont Action and Contemplation, uh, they contained uh, this intriguing line. The kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of heaven is really a metaphor for a state of consciousness, for a state of consciousness. It is not a place to go to, but a place you come from. The kingdom of heaven is really a metaphor for a state of consciousness. It is not really a place to go to, but, is it, a, but it is a place you come from. It is a place you come from. The reign of heaven, the Christ consciousness, writes Rohr, is not a, necessarily a place that we go to so much as it is a place that we come from, a place we come from. We say in common parlance, I get where you're coming from, or man, I sure don't know where you're coming from. When we say that, we're talking about our understanding a person's orientation, a person's perspective, uh, a person's worldview, how they are wired in life. If we've been paying any attention over the last year or more, especially over the last several months, we have witnessed a nation, our nation, communities, families struggling because of where we're coming from, where one another is coming from. It's not racial tension at its very heart and not knowing where each other is coming from and, and, and the dominant people's limited willingness to try, to listen, to, and, and, and the not seeing the world that has been uh, created based upon that failing. Is not racial, racial, t racial tension at its heart a not seeing where we're coming from and a dominant uh, culture's inability, unwillingness to see the world that's been created from that not listening? not seeing, not hearing. When I, as a white person, listen to the personal stories of African Americans, I have to acknowledge a long history, a long history of my not knowing, my people's not knowing, intimately at least, the black experience, not listening, not paying attention, not revering, not seeing the divine, not understanding the divine in me and the divine in that other seeing one another. So the work, the work of anti-racism, the work of anti 
racism involves me uh, in a deep exploration of my own personal and family stories and histories, the orientation of the world that I grew up in, and a clear choice to work to acknowledge and to change where I'm coming from. Where I'm coming from when I find that there is something other than that reverent acknowledgement, that reverent acknowledgement, something other than seeing that the divine in me sees the divine in the other, in you. But that's not where the work ends. That's not where the work ends. The, end, the work continues with living out that acknowledgement to repair and to uh, change the divide, the breach between me and others, between uh, the place and the world within which I live and its policies and its church and its being. In a nation of such stark political difference, which we have come to see in the last months in this nation of such stark political differences, it is baffling, absolutely baffling for us to understand where one another is coming from. Where are you coming from? It's possible our recent election has made our differences appear more stark than they may be. Still, still, it often seems like we're from different worlds. As we come to the completion of the church's liturgical year today. Yes, this is the feast of the reign of Christ or, or Christ the King, which culminates our liturgical year before next Sunday's beginning anew with the season of Advent. Our gospel story at this culmination of this liturgical year is one final attempt of Jesus to reveal, to reveal the good way in which he invites his hearers to follow. As I have been saying over and over over these past uh, weeks, these final stories uh, uh, on, uh, on, of, about the reign of God in Matthew's gospel are an attempt to press people. They're an attempt to press people to see the distinction of life in the reign of God so that they, so that we, will opt for that life, that liberty, that unity of the reign of God. The apocalyptic language of the text reveals the stark difference, the separation, the disunity, like a shepherd separating sheep from goats. Apocalyptic language, you'll remember, is not descriptive of a future time. It is not descriptive of a future time, but it is a judgment upon the present moment. It is not descriptive of some future time, but a judgment upon the present moment and an invitation to see to awaken and to change. Seems like we've been living this kind of apocalyptic divide. And so we know it's destruction. We know it's pain. Jesus reveals in this story the inherent orientation, the perspective the action, the coming from that distinguishes the good way of God in the world. Jesus reveals in this story the inherent orientation, the perspective, the, the wiring, the 
worldview, the coming from that distinguishes the good way of God in the world. Like this. I was hungry. And you fed me. thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Jesus himself personally identifying with the one served. Jesus himself personally identifying with the one served. The divine life in that one as if it was he himself. Well, there's judgment. There's judgment. Matthew scholar Herman Weichen writes about those in the scene that wondered why they had not attended to the Lord of life. How could they not have attended to the Lord of life? And he writes, they have been so completely absorbed in their own self-centered world. They have been so completely absorbed in their own self-centered world that their destitute and impoverished fellow human beings remained invisible to them. So absorbed in their own self that the destitute and impoverished fellow human beings remained invisible to them. Didn't see them. Didn't know their story. Never looked, Weichen said, into their faces. Consequently, they did not encounter the son of humanity and his solidarity with them and their needs. By revealing the distinction, by re revealing the difference, you and I are invited to see you and I are invited to wake. You and I are invited to follow in the good way of the reign of God where the power of God is in God's solidarity and God's connection and God's compassion and God's being with. God's being one with us. God being one with us. God being one, particularly with those who don't get seen in our world. The invitation is this. The invitation for us is to come from this orientation from which Jesus comes. The invitation is for us too, to be invited to, to come from this worldview, this perspective. We come to the end of this year and the breaking open of a new time. We come to the end of this year and the breaking open of a new time, the coming of a new year in our lives of faith. You and I challenged? You and I awakened, you and I called forth to live in the divine embrace and to come from, to learn to come from, to learn to change toward, the, to learn to be with this way of human being, this consciousness of Christ, this reign of God in the world. You and I challenged, awakened, called forth to live 
in the divine embrace, challenged, awakened, called forth to live from, to live from the consciousness that we are one. The divine life in me sees the divine life in you. The divine life in you sees the divine life in me. The reign of God. That's where we come from. Let it be where we come from. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Virgin Mary and suffered under the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again, judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and to deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing your joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live safely. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. Your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Almighty and everlasting God, whose will it is to restore all things in your well-beloved Son, the King of kings and Lord of lords, mercifully grant that the peoples of the earth, divided and enslaved by sin, may be freed and brought together under his most gracious rule, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Lord God, your power was revealed when you raised Christ from the dead and seated him at your right hand. Grant that we may always give you thanks for your immeasurable love and show that gratitude in loving service to all our brothers and sisters. Through Jesus Christ. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Welcome to St. Luke Church on this day. We're glad that you've joined us together and that we can be together in this way uh, as this Christian community in our time and place. Let me invite you to join us for coffee hour afterward, after the liturgy, by clicking coffee hour so that we can uh, have some time of, 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 one, of personal contact with each other. Also pay attention to the news of the parish so that you can uh, be sure you know of the events that are happening as we uh, prepare for this uh, new time together in our life as Advent approaches. Also be sure to give. Click the D Give tab and uh, um, allow uh, that to be a way for you to give yourself away. God bless you.
I got a crown up in another kingdom made of that good news. Blessed are you, O God of the universe, from your bounty we have given to your grace we offer. Through baptism, we have been raised with Christ, ordained to a royal priesthood, and made citizens in a holy nation as faithful priests serving the Lord of all being. Almighty God, ruler of all nations, cause the leaders of nations to recognize your sovereignty and to accept your gracious rule. Make them proponents of peace and lovers of justice. Crown each ruler with compassion that all peoples may live in peace. Almighty God, merciful monarch, look with pity on all who suffer, those with incurable disease, those unjustly imprisoned, those denied dignity, the hungry, those without shelter, those who live without hope. Direct us toward them that their royalty may be reclaimed and their lives celebrate your grace. Almighty God, Lord of the Church, we pray for your holy Catholic Church on earth. Gather all who bear the name of Christ into one vigorous, faithful community of faith, that the world may see one King of glory and one kingdom of grace. Almighty God, benevolent judge, we pray for all your people gathered here to seek your grace. By your mercy, prepare for the day of judgment, that we may accept it as a rich and royal gift for the eternal pleasure of the faithful. Grant these petitions, O God, according to your perfect will, that your holy name may be praised and proclaimed until the day when all the faithful shall gather before your throne in heaven, through the merits of Christ the King. Amen. Accept, O oh Lord, our thanks and praise for all that you have done for us. We thank you for the splendor of the whole creation, for the beauty of this world, for the wonder of life, and for the mystery of love. We thank you for the blessing of family and friends, and for the loving care which surrounds us on every side. We thank you for setting us at tasks which demand our best efforts and for leading us to accomplishments which satisfy and delight us. We thank you also for those disappointments and failures that lead us to acknowledge our dependence on you alone. Above all, we thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, 
for the truth of his word and the example of his life, for his steadfast obedience by which we overcame temptation, for his dying through which he overcame death, and for his rising to life again in which we are raised to the life of your kingdom. Grant us the gift of your spirit that we may know him and make him known and through him at all times and in all places may give thanks to you in all things. Amen. Amen. The peace of God which surpasses all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God. The blessing of God Almighty, the creator, redeemer, and sustainer of life be upon you and remain with you always. Let us go forth in peace. In the name of Christ.